We are sisters, Julia and Anastasia, caring for a regenerative fruit farm on the east coast of Australia. As we learn to farm and care for the land regeneratively, we have also learned to integrate regenerative living practices into many aspects of our life here on the farm. We try to avoid buying anything new, only using what we already have. Like turning a trampoline that would have been thrown out into a chicken home. We built this chicken dome from our childhood trampoline that was broken and needed throwing out. It is now the best home for our chickens, so today we're going to build another one. The chickens live here overnight, where they are protected by our local predators of foxes, snakes and goannas. We have attached an electric fence to the metal so that if anything tries to harm them in the night, they'll get a small zap to warn them away. This has protected them before. We once heard a fox yelp in the night, and one night we forgot to attach the electric fence, and we had a python go into the cage. Luckily, we heard the chickens calling out and we were able to scare it away from them. We also use snake-proof wire as a secondary precaution. The exciting thing about this is that while they are in here, they're making a no-dig garden bed. We collect weeds from the garden and feed them our kitchen scraps, hay, or any other organic matter. In return, we are given fresh, beautiful eggs. Then they are let out to forage in the paddock for the day with their friends, the ducks, the goats, and the sheep. Our plan today is to build another dome so that we can begin a rotating garden system. This means that the chooks will scratch, turn the composting materials, fertilize their pen, and weed the area while at the same time they control any pests. After some time, it is a weed-free, fertilized garden bed to plant into. The cage will protect our precious vegetables from bush turkeys or sneaky sheep, goats or ducks. We eliminate any tilling, we don't buy any fertilizer, and a healthy composted soil is organically pest-free. Chickens actually originated from Malaysian rainforests, so they happily do all this scratching work for us. When the garden bed is ready, we move the chickens into a second trampoline pen to do the same thing and then we keep rotating between the pens. Or, you never know, we might be lucky enough to find another trampoline. Although, with all these trampolines, it could start looking like a UFO crash landing. It's time to get building. These toolboxes were made from old olive oil cans. We repurposed so many things around here. Our duck pen is made from an old metal bed. Our brooder is made from an old trailer our fence from an old copper pipe, and our clothes are mostly from op shops or recycled fabrics. First, we turn the trampoline upside down and begin assembling the circle. We collected this poly pipe from an old farm irrigation pipe and cut it to the right length to make a circle. Using our rusty high school maths, this meant cutting it to approximately 13 meters. The poly pipe will act as a barrier for insulation for the electric fence. We'll temporarily strap it to hold it in place. It's being a bit tricky because of the up and down ground, but we think we finally have it. It's starting to rain, so time for a break. We froze these mangoes last year because our trees fruited super heavily and we couldn't eat enough to keep up. Julia has discovered that they make the best gelato by whizzing the frozen fruit. It's our favorite summer snack. All right, back to work. The next step is to drill through the poly pipe and thread the wire through. We can't let metal touch the ground or the electricity will earth out. Electricity will not pass through the plastic though. We're connecting the circle by inserting a shallow pipe and we'll drill them together to fasten it later. Woo! 
The chickens are checking out their new home already. We were lucky to also salvage this pipe that fits perfectly over the trampoline legs to make the dome shape. Now we are wrapping wire around. This wire mesh is the only material that we bought in this build. It's necessary because it's snake proof. And it also seems to be tiny dog proof. The black cockatoos are flying straight overhead. I guess they approve of the build. I'm a fashion student, so I'm always finding ways of combining chicken pen building with dressmaking. Here, I'm making darts so that the wire shapes around the sphere. So, to finish it off, we just need to strap the wire to the base. Finish for today, tomorrow we'll continue fitting the wire and attach some netting and a tarp over the top and then we'll cut a piece of bamboo for their roost. It's hard to get any work done when these twins need cuddles and snuggles. We've realised that the practice of regenerative farming extends to the way that we live our life mending and upcycling clothes rather than buying new ones. All of the clothes and shoes that we're wearing are from secondhand shops. 
where sustainability seeks to slow down degradation and make choices with the lowest environmental impact. Regenerative practices hope to go beyond this, repairing what has already been taken and reversing the trend of increasing global temperatures. We're striving to be a part of this. Some of the ways that we practice regenerative farming are, we farm organically without the help of chemicals or bringing any new compost or soil onto the farm. Instead, we work to repair the soil that we already have here. We do this by integrating animals within our farming systems. We rotate them regularly so that the grass and the ground cover is maintained, and they eat the weeds, pests, and fertilize the soil with their poop. They forage and eat the varied plants and graze amongst the trees. We follow the principles of permaculture. We have a home garden for food security, and we practice no dig, minimal tillage composting, and use animal manures to fertilize. We also try to practice regenerative living in all aspects of our life. We mend our clothes and participate in alternative food networks, where we sell our food locally and buy food locally. And our favorite thing to do is trade food with the neighbors and friends. We live and farm on the land of the Arakwal and Minyanbul people of Bunjilung, and these practices of regenerative agriculture and permaculture owe their roots and theories to indigenous knowledge. They have been practiced by indigenous people around the world for so many years. These are just some of the ways we try to live more regeneratively. We have come to realize that in this moment, sustainability is not good enough. And we are hopeful that in taking action by living and farming in this way that recognizes Mother Earth and her systems, we could make positive change on this small patch of Earth that we are lucky to care for. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.